We have to build a wall, folks. We have to build a wall. And a wall works. All you have to do is go to Israel, say, how's your wall working? Walls work. 2016, there were 11 illegal immigrants who entered Israel. In, and, and then they raised the height of the wall an additional several feet. And in 2017, there was not one illegal immigrant that made it through the southern border into Israel. His politicians say fences don't work until they need one. Europe has more, four times more barriers today than they did in the Cold War. And anyone who lives on our southern border, along with the agents who patrol it, will tell you that walls work. In the country of Morocco, they built one 1,700 miles long. And you know what it did? The last line right there. It resulted in a ceasefire ending a war. It is true. The 110-acre sovereign state is surrounded by a 39-foot tall wall originally built by Pope Leo IV in the 9th century to keep out Saracen Muslim raiders. Imagine walls working. Hey, you're with America Trends. Glad to have you here with us for the hour. Uh, we are talking to Barry Newsbaum here in a minute, but regarding the walls, you know, we have another caravan on its way to the southern border, reportedly 8,000 to 12,000 people strong uh, making their way here. So we'll see when they get here. There's no real estimate yet. Um, we have all kinds of reports of this is 267 people who apparently they say they burrowed under the wall in the Texas area uh, after midnight January 16th uh, the majority of those taken into custody Central American parents with children and unaccompanied minors according to Border Patrol uh, they did not try to evade Border Patrol but there they are and then also we saw some video of, of if you look online people throwing a three-year-old child over a fence in, in one part of the border. So we need these walls. We need them to be fortified. Look at this for our TV viewers. And there she went, a 16-foot drop. So very frightening. And uh, we're here with Barry Nussbaum, as I mentioned, as of the American Truth Project. And he's done some research into all this and talks about this on his radio, uh, or excuse me, his television program. Barry, welcome back to America Trends. Thanks, Glick. Great to be with you. Look at you. You're, you're already uh, in demand right there. <laughs> hey, uh, so, so, so listen, some of the video we watched of President Trump declaring we need a wall, here's why they work. You almost feel like this is so obvious to the Democrats. They're just playing us when they say they're immoral, they don't work. <laughs> right? Yeah, they all say that. And then you go to their house and there's a wall around their house. There, or you, you nailed it. Hey. And there's a, there's a wall around their estate. Uh, there's video out now on YouTube, Amy, where independent journalists are traveling around the country, and they're literally videotaping everybody's wall <laughs> who says in the press, it's immoral, it's racist, it's xenophobic, it's anti-American, it's anti-democracy, and on and on and on. And yet, they live behind a wall, starting with Nancy Pelosi has a wall around her multi-million dollar estate in Napa and her beautiful estate in San Francisco. And Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton have them and Barack Obama has one and John Kerry has one and on and on and on. And what's really disingenuous is the Hollywood celebrities, Amy, all of whom have come out and said, walls and guns are horrible things and it's not the nature of our country and we're inclusive and everybody should come in and they all live behind walls many of whom have armed guards with them and outside their properties to protect them from the riffraff that they want coming in over the border unimpeded but then again not to their personal residences god forbid right boy go figure and you know, you just have to wonder, are, is their constituency buying any of this? I, I, I wonder about that uh, because the mass general media that President Trump calls the fake media says absolutely not everybody wants open borders. But when you interview the people that have any connection to the border, like the Border Patrol, all Border Patrol management, going back two decades, and that's Republican and Democratic appointees, all the ICE agents, 
all the immigration officials, all the people that patrol along the border for the various sheriffs and police agencies, the patrols and so on, they all say the same thing, which is all of the residents in the border communities want security. Look, uh, being from San Diego, as we both are originally, it's mm -hmm. obvious that everybody in San Diego was begging for it because thousands used to pour over the border every night in San Ysidro uh, as soon as the sun went down. Immigration there is now, illegal immigration I'm referring to, is now at zero. And the people on the American side are ecstatic. They were afraid to go out at night. They had their kids locked up at night because, look, they're not all bad people, but all it takes is one. And if that's the one that kills your daughter, that's one too many. Everyone that's asked that lives in those communities, Amy, is fervently, enthusiastically begging for security. The wall in many places is simply, get this, a mark on the ground. That's the barrier, a mark on the ground. That's right. Google some of the ranchers in Texas who have to deal daily with seeing if they're going to be assaulted and confronted and beg for food uh, by people who are on their property who, who are, are completely desperate. So, see, this is a humanitarian crisis on both sides of the border. When you get people jumping over the border and they have not, you don't know how long they've had food, haven't had shelter, what dire straits they're in, illness. It's a humanitarian crisis. And by the way, you mentioned San Diego. Just want to say, for people who don't really live along the border and think everyone has a cold, cold heart, Heart because they don't want hundreds of, of illegal aliens coming in every day. They are already coming in because we're allowing some of them. Just today, the county board in San Diego, the supervisors voted to allow a migrant shelter downtown in an old courthouse. And we have news that there are buses dropping off uh, 100 illegals a day just in San Diego, um, 100 migrants a day. Uh, at, at various places, uh, bus stops and, and things like this. People don't, they're not really knowing the whole story here, Barry. It's not only that, but I have this personal preference. If, if I was the one making the rules, I would say, look, I have the same heart everyone else does. I want to take care of as many people as possible. Here's my caveat. I want to take care of as many people as possible here, our veterans, are homeless, are mentally ill, people living on the street that don't know where their next meal is coming from, people that have come back from a war that we asked them to go fight and they live on the street. When they're all taken care of, Amy, I'll consider more people from the outside. You're 100% right. San Diego has one of the worst homeless problems there is. So we have illegals who are going to come here and step over our homeless to go into that courthouse to have their shelter. It could be an abomination in the works.